Welcome everybody, this is Caleb and in this video we're going to be talking about how to get started with Git and GitHub for the absolute beginner. So if you want to get a GitHub profile and put your code in GitHub for your own personal projects, that's what this video is for. If you want to work with GitHub in a large collaborative environment, this video will help get you there, but that's not what we're going to be talking about in this video. My goal here is just to help you get your code up here so you can keep it safe and also get it on other computers so you can work across different machines. This is also a really great way to build a portfolio. For example, you know, you can keep your code in here. Potential employers can go and look through this and see, hey man, this guy's, you know, not that bad. So if you wanna start building your code portfolio, that's what this video is for. So the very first thing is you should understand that Git and GitHub are not the same thing. Git is a software. You can find that at git-scm. Dot com and this is git this is the software you're going to install on your computer github on the other hand is just a place to store the git repository so the repository is just a collection of code each one of these is a repository so when you make a, a repository on your local machine with git you can then push that repository up to github but you don't have to use github github is just one example another one that i've used is bitbucket so here is Bitbucket, and this is just a competitive tool to GitHub. This is just so you can understand the difference between Git, the software that makes all of this possible, and tools like GitHub or Bitbucket. These are all just centralized locations to store your code. So it's sort of like a Google Drive, but for code. So let's go ahead and X out of Bitbucket. We're going to be using GitHub for this example. And what we need to do first, absolutely first, is you need to get Git installed on your local machine. Now, if you're on Mac, you're going to use Git through just your normal terminal, which you know you can open up by typing in terminal in your apps. But if you're on Windows, this is actually going to install another tool. And this tool is going to be known as mingw. So that'll actually allow you to type in Linux commands, even if you're on a Windows machine, which is very nice when you're following along with tutorials that are teaching on Linux or on Mac. So go through the installation process and it shouldn't be too hard. If you're given any options to add it to your path, then go ahead and check yes. That way we, we can just type in git in a terminal or in the command line on Windows and we get a response, meaning it's installed and we can use it by just typing git directly. Now, when you first use git, it recommends that you do this initial setup of setting your name and your email. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and in our terminal, I'm going to paste this, but you can just type it out if you want. And I'm going to change John Doe to Caleb. Can you spell my name? Caleb Curry. Then I'm gonna take this example here, paste that and change this to my email as well. So go ahead and set this to your email address and hit enter. And now we have those configurations set for Git. So let's clear the screen. And now let's take a look at where we're at in our file system. So we are in the users forward slash Caleb Curry folder. If you're following along and you want to get to your user directory, you can say CD tilde, and that'll get you to the same path. And what we can do is we can create a folder here with MKDIR, and we'll just call this Git example, like so. So we have this new folder git example, and we can change directory into that using cd git example. So now when we check our path with pwd, we get users, Caleb Curry, git example. Great. Let's clear the screen. Now we have a text editor over here, and what I want to do is I want to go to that same folder. So what we can do is we can go to file, open, and then in our user directory, we can find git example and open that. So now we're in this folder and we can see our files in here, but we don't have any right now, but you'll be able to click this and see all of the files. So to turn this into a Git repository, the command is git init. And just for you guys sake, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So that way I can type this all on one line. So git init and it says initialize empty git repository in this location. So to see what happened, you can say ls dash a, and that's going to list all of the files, including hidden ones. And there's this hidden file.git. 
And this directory is required for this to be used in Git, and that's where all of your code changes are going to be kept track of. Now what we can do is we can make a new file. You can go ahead and right click, new file. We'll just call this hello.py. This is gonna be a Python file. You could do a text file, a markdown file, whatever file or whatever kind of language you're working with, it should work just the same. So in here, I'm just going to say hello GitHub and running this, just making sure that my code is correct. You know, it's a pretty complex application here. I don't wanna mess it up. So these changes are saved. Now on the terminal side, what we can do is we can say git status. And this is going to say all of the changed files and untracked files as well. So the next command is git add dot, which will add all of our files. And then we can check the status again. And you can see it's now changes to be committed. So this is known as the staging area. There's basically a two-step process. We have untracked files, then we put them in the staging area and they're ready to be committed. So to commit, we say git commit hyphen M and then a message such as first commit, or you often see initial commit or init. So we'll say git commit hyphen M first commit. I'll show you that on one line just so it's not quite as confusing. That's what it's going to look like. We'll hit enter and it says one file changed, one insertion. So now one more time, we're gonna say git status. And you can see here it says on branch master, nothing to commit, working tree clean. So that's the whole process to create a repository and add code to our repository. We start with git init to initialize the repository. Then we can check the status of the repository. We add our files with git add dot, and then we commit the files with git commit hyphen M and then some message. Once we have all of that done, we can say git log. And this is going to show our log of all of our commits. When we commit multiple times, there's going to be more in this list. So for example, right now, if we say git status, there's no changes, but I can go over here and add some new code. We'll just say print another line. So I added that line of code and we can add this to our repository by saying git add dot git commit m new print and generally i like to put these in present tense so i don't usually say oh i added a print line i'll say add a print line but that's just a minor thing it's not that big of a deal so we committed this to our repository and now we can say git log and see the two commits. So there's all kinds of different things you can do. You can compare different commits. You can compare your local directory to a particular commit. And you can get in all of that if you want to know the details. But the focus of this video is going to be just how do I get this onto GitHub now? So what we're going to do is we're going to go up into GitHub. We're going to create a new repository. And we'll just call this hello. And for this, I'm going to make it a public repository. And it says here, skip this step if you're importing an existing repository. So because we made this repository locally, we do not need to do any of these here. We can do those after the fact. So let's go ahead and create a repository. And here is our repository. So since we're pushing an existing repository, this is the code we're going to want. So we can take these one line at a time, paste that here, get remote add origin, and then a web address. So a remote is a remote location to store your code and we're giving it the name origin and this is the web address to where it needs to go. So we'll hit that line in. Next up, we'll say git branch hyphen capital M main. So copy that and we'll paste that in our terminal here. And then lastly, we will say git push hyphen u origin main. So I'll push that right here and there we go. Those are the three steps. So we'll get a response here and it says branch main set up to track remote branch main from origin, which is basically a wordy way to say that our local main branch is going to be connected to the main branch up in GitHub. Now to explain some of these lines, git branch hyphen M main, that's actually going to rename the branch because by default, your branch is named master as of right now. And they didn't like that. So they're changing it to main. So we're renaming our branch to main. Then we are pushing our code to the origin remote, which we created up here. 
and the branch we're pushing is called main. So just a little bit of an explanation for that. So since we did all of the stuff, we did the pushing, we should be able to go back to our GitHub account, do a refresh, and there's your first repo. You can go in here and see the code, voila. Additionally, you can go in and see the history. We got the new print and the first commit. So you can go and see the older versions of the code. Now I wanna show you another example where we could actually describe this project with this .md file. GitHub is automatically going to render that down here. So what we could do is we could do that for our own repository. So here we are back at our hello repository. We can go back to the homepage. We just need to add a .md file right here. So here's how we're gonna do that. First, we'll clear this out, clean that up, and we're going to focus on the code a little bit here. So let's go ahead and we'll add a file. So right click your folder, new file, readme.md. And a really simple markdown file will look like this, pound introduction. That's going to be the title. And then we could do a subtitle. And then we could put some text in here like so. So that is our markdown file and we can add that to our repo like so. And then we'll say git push origin main. All right, so we pushed our code up to GitHub. We'll go back and do a refresh. And there we go, we have a markdown readme. Next up, you will probably want to add a .git ignore. So often when you're working in different coding languages, there's going to be a lot of generated files. You know, these could be compiled code or just different dependencies that you don't necessarily need to store in your project because the person who downloads your project could just install them or generate them themselves. So we only wanna put the essential stuff here. So to tell Git to ignore certain files, here's how you do it. You're going to, in your folder, say new file and say dot git ignore. This is going to create a new file, which has the name dot git ignore. And this is specifically used to say what types of files you don't want in your repository. So for this, what I'll typically do is I'll just find a nice git ignore template for whatever language I'm using. So for example, I just searched Python git ignore. And here is a perfect example that Plenty of people have decided that it was worthy of their stars, so I know it's legit. So let's go ahead and just take all of this code, copy this. You could also download the file if you wanted, and we'll just paste this in our .git ignore file and save it. And just a friendly reminder, you can say get status to see those changes, so we added that .git ignore. So let's add that into our repo, git add. If you want to say a specific file, you can say the file name, git ignore. And then we'll git commit hyphen m and we'll say add dot git ignore. There we go. And then lastly, we have it committed locally, but we still need to push those changes up to GitHub. So we'll say git push origin main. Perfect. Now let's go back to our repo, do a refresh, and now we have this .git ignore. You can look through this and see what is ignored. So as an example, different virtual environments are ignored. We can scroll up more and see that anything with .log as an extension is ignored. So why don't we try that? We can go in here and say a new file and give this the name test.log. We'll just put something like logging stuff and let's go over here and say git status. And it says nothing to commit, working tree clean. So you can see this test.log is completely ignored. So following this setup, you could essentially create private files for different configurations or connection strings, and those don't have to be pushed up into your repository. You don't ever want to push anything that's private or sensitive into GitHub. And I'd even be cautious, even if it's a private repo, but that's a little bit more safe than a public repo where everything can be seen. Now the next step is once you have this repo up here, how do we get this repo on another machine or in a different folder? That's what we're gonna talk about now. So what I wanna do is I want to clear out this code, 
and I want to basically change our path. So we're going to go up a directory and we're going to make a new directory and say git example two. So now our current structure is we have a git example right here and we have a git example two. So let's go ahead and travel to this git example two folder. We'll change directory here, git example two, and we'll open that folder here as well. So we'll say file open, go up a directory and then open git example two. So now we are not in a git repo. If we say git status, it says not a git repository. So this is the perfect chance for us to basically simulate downloading this on another computer or just another folder, which is exactly what we're doing here. So it's actually really simple, especially since you have permissions for this, you can make changes locally and push them and the changes will be seen. So we'll take this web address of the repo. So just the root directory here and we'll say git clone and then pass in that web address. So git clone and then the web address. Hit enter. It's going to clone everything and it's going to show up in your folders. I always forget this, but it puts an additional folder for whatever the repo is named in GitHub. So inside a Git example too, we now have this hello folder. So you could have also done that one directory up. That, that doesn't really matter. You can change that however you like. So as long as you have a directory with that .git file, you're good. In our terminal over here, we're going to change into that hello folder, and then we can say git status. All right, so now we are in our repo. So we can make a change here, and we'll say print from another file. We'll say git add dot git commit M, and if you need to check the files, you can say git status. We'll say add a third line. There we go. And then we'll just say git push origin main. And we can see those changes here now. Do Go into the hello.py file and see from another file. Now, the only difference you might experience when you're going through this process is you might need to put in your GitHub credentials to push and pull from your GitHub account. I've already done that on my machine, so I don't have to do that, but really that shouldn't give you any hiccups. Now, I'm tempted to go into branching and all this other stuff, but honestly, I really just want to keep it simple for this video. That is how you create a repository, push it up into GitHub, and then download that in a different location. I wanted to show you all one more tip and that is when we're cloning a repo, we had this hello folder generated for us from the repo name in GitHub. I wanna show you how to change that if you want. So let's go ahead and go back to our user folder. So this is where we're at right now. And we can do a clone right here. So we can say git clone and then the web address right here. And then we can give it a project name such as Git example three. It's going to pull all of the code locally and then we can change directory into git example three. And you can open it in your code editor as well. Open, go up to your user directory, git example three, hit open. And now we don't have that nested hello folder. Just a little side thing, most of you probably aren't going to worry about it too much, but just thought I'd throw that out there. So if this was helpful, be sure to leave a comment and also thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe.